Tarzan of the Apes, from the novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs, with Mr. James H. Pierce as Tarzan, and Miss Joanne Burroughs as Jane Porter. Professor Porter and his party, assuming the roles of powerful medicine men, have entered the sacred temple cave of the cannibals, only to learn that they're in a trap. Jane Porter, meanwhile, has induced Tarzan to take her to the cannibal kraal when he goes seeking arrows there. They find evidence that her father and his party have been there. Searching the huts for her father, Jane is seized by a black arm. Now, are you ready? Hold your breath. <laughs> Jane's screams carry to Tarzan at the chief's hut. Tarzan jumps out into the clearing, speeds across the stockade, reaches the last hut and bursts in through the opening. With a blood-curdling yell, Tarzan grips the black holding Jane. He twists the warrior's arm back. The black screams with agony, but he lets Jane go. Another black leaps on Tarzan's back, but the ape-man lunges forward, throws the black over his shoulder, catches him by the foot, and with a mighty swing, throws the terrified native into the open. Tarzan lifts Jane from her feet. He darts out of the hut and makes for the tree overhanging the palisade. He's too late. The black hunting party piles in through the gate. They're between Tarzan and the tree. <laughs> Both be killed. Coleman Ganny, no kills yet. Jane, no frightened. The blacks close in. Tarzan stops running, places Jane on her feet, and turns to face them. One big black throws back his arm to hurl a spear. The blacks swarm over Tarzan like so many ants. By sheer weight of numbers, they pull the ape man to the ground. Tarzan struggles, but a half dozen blacks hold grimly to each arm. They pick him up, tie him with his own grass rope, and throw him into a hut. A powerful black has seized Jane. She struggles to escape, striking futilely at her captor. Let me go, you brute. Oh, don't, don't. Fight him, fight him. <laughs> In the mummy cave, Professor Porter, Darno, Clayton, and Philander are looking for the witch doctor or a way out of the cave. Uh, do you not think, Darno, that we might make an effort to get out as we entered through the curtain of water? Certain death, monsieur. Naturally, we have no way of knowing that when we came in. But no, monsieur, we cannot possibly get out that way. <laughs> What was that? It was dark enough before. Now it's worse. Something was rolled in front of the cave. Yes. A huge stone I noticed as we came in. And then it would seem that our suspicions of the witch doctor were justified. Yes, but this conversation isn't getting us out of here. And I think, gentlemen, if we are to get out, the sooner we do it, the better. Of course, of course. And at the same time, if we do get out of here quickly, we can pretend that we had no trouble. The other exit must be at the back of the cave. Behind the altar. Mais pourquoi? Why, monsieur? Because the witch doctor didn't pass me on his way out. Of that I'm positive. Ah! Archimedes. Yes, sir. Look here, look here. This relief carving. Similar to that on the wall of the sacred way in Babylon. This is no time for Lander to be talking of carving. We should be getting wisely. Lander, I do believe you've hit upon it. Let us investigate. Sir. Mais, monsieur, I do not understand you. We should... I knew they were both badly bitten by the archaeological bug, but I didn't think it would be that bad. Uh, but, Clayton, you fail to understand the significance. The only thing that I understand is that we must get out of here. Quickly! Now, Clayton, have you found a way out yet? Well, no, of course not. Well, then. Now, look, Professor, the similarity of treatment is too obvious. Again, if your assumption is correct, Follow the freeze this way. Here, Professor. Crude, but understandable. The way of the soul. Yes, yes, Philander. And the liberation, and so, Professor, as you know, is the symbol of everlasting life. And if we are right... <laughs> there's that weird noise again. What are they saying? Oh, yes. Wait. Joe, is it possible? What? What is that? What? Uh, is it, sir, it is about Jane. Yes, yes, monsieur. It is a message from the village. The hunting party that left us returned to the kraal and captured the white devil god and the white men's arm. And here we are, trapped in this hole. If I ever lay hands on that witch, uh, Doctor. Yes, of course, Clayton. Now, calm down, calm down. 
We all realize our mistakes after we've made them. Uh, now, hurry, Philander. Let us test the accuracy of our deductions in finding a means of escape. Escape? I thought... For the past ten minutes, we've been following signs which we are sure point to a way of escape. Uh, yes, yes. Come, Philander. Push upon the symbol of everlasting light. The ank sign in the breeze. I am pressing, Professor. And if we are right... A press harder, Philander. Yes, yes. Harder. Yes, I'm going to be There. It's opening. Come, Clayton. Come down, though. Here I hope is our means of exit. Well, I'll be... Hey, how close? No, astounding, monsieur. Follow Philander's lead, gentlemen. Archaeological knowledge is not without practical merit. The air is getting more pure. Come on. How did Come you on. Get? We did not get. We follow the fire of relief, depicting the escape of the soul from the nether world, on the assumption that if there were an outlet, he could lie this way. And quiet. Unbelievable. But how did you know? What did you touch to swing the stone open? The symbols were a mixture of Acadian and Egyptian, and we saw a rude impression of the Egyptian sign of everlasting life. The ankh, a cross, suspended by a circle. The circle was in relief, and Philander pressed up. Right! Right! Look! Right! Right! I can see the ocean! Right! Hadn't we better investigate a bit before stepping into the open? Yes, yes, everything is clear. Just as I told you, I can see the ocean. Uh, yes, here. yes, we must be quite high up. Uh, that was somewhat of a climb. Uh, voila, see, there is no sign of our ship. Then, then the shots we heard must have been some other safari. Oh, oh Jane. Jane? Yes, Jane. Et puis, monsieur, there is the crowd. And the natives making for it on the run. Uh, then there is little or no chance of discovery. All right, Professor. Let's get to the stockade as quickly as possible. Back at the crowd, Tarzan and Jane lie bound in the same hut. Around the sacrificial altar with its awesome fire, the natives dance in wild confusion. Tarzan struggles with his bonds, but the natives have tied him with his own grass rope, the rope which is strong enough to withstand the struggles of Numa the lion. White skin. Yes, Jane. Jane frightened? Of course, white skin. Terribly. What do you think they will do to us? Jane. Jane, no talk. A little more. White skin go. What? What are you going to do? Tarzan rolls across the floor of the hut. He may not be able to burst the strands of his own grass rope, but the ape man knows that with his teeth, he can make short work of the rope which binds Jane. Jane, stay. No move. White skin, heat rope. Quick. You can't do that. White skin. Jane, no talk. No move. Tarzan grips the strands of Jane's rope in his strong white teeth. If only he had togs or toblats, strong pointed fighting fangs. It's, it's giving, White skin. I, I believe you'll make it. Little by little, the ropes loosen. Jane frees one arm. Now the other is unbound. She pulls her arms free, bends down, and unwinds the coil about her feet. Now for you, White Skin. I'm free. Let me untie your arms. Oh, all these knots are so tight. No quick. Break rope, not quick. I understand. More hurry, less speed. My fingers are all thumbs. Oh, there. Can you move? Tarzan is free. He goes to the opening of the hut, moves aside the covering mat. He sees a big black coming toward the hut. Jane, no move. Down, down. As he talks, Tarzan climbs onto the frame over the entrance. Jane throws herself to the floor. The black thrusts aside the mat, enters. Tarzan drops on the warrior's shoulders. The black tries to scream, but Tarzan's steely fingers choke the sound in the cannibal's throat. In a second, it's over. Tarzan takes the warrior's bow and arrows, his spear. Then he bends down and picks up the limp figure. From the ape man's throat comes the victory cry of the bull ape. The natives momentarily are paralyzed. In that bare second, Tarzan raises the black high above his head and with a mighty heave, casts a warrior into the staring faces of his fellows. Quickly, Tarzan drops to his knees. He picks up the bow and arrows. Jane takes her place at his side. She clutches the revolver she had taken from the native hut. Only five shells, White Skin. But I'll make every one count. White Skin got plenty arrows. Kill plenty black men. The blacks recovered from their surprise are advancing on the hut. Jane's revolver spits once. A black crumples to the ground, and by his side another. The warriors surge forward. One of the chief's men shouts to them that they've, they've captured the white devil god once before, and they can do it again. <laughs> oh, 
Tarzan's hail of arrows and Jane's shots take their toll. The mob hesitates. Another and another. Another arrow finds its mark. The blacks turn. They make for the shoulder of the stockade. All but the chief's son. With a ghastly, vicious laugh, he takes a handful of straw from one of the huts. He ties it to the shaft of an arrow, plunges it into the sacrificial fire, fits the arrow to his bow. In a flashing arc of flame, the arrow wings its way across the clearing, buries itself in the dry, thatched roof of the hut. Fire creeps up the tinder dry straw, spreads rapidly, and with a flash, the hut bursts into flame. Can Tarzan and Jane escape those crackling flames? Will Professor Porter, Philander Clayton, and Donald see the flames in time to help? This is Anna.